I'm Eric Lundin, editor of the Tube and Pipe Journal and host of TPJ TV. For this episode, we're in Romeoville, Illinois, visiting Chicago Tube and Iron. The company was founded in 1914 as a service center. Over the years, it expanded its capabilities to include fabrication and welding so it could ship fabricated products and assemblies. Eventually, the company added a third component to its business model, ASME boiler code work. Here to take us through the various processes it uses in these projects is Mark Soka, Vice President of the Engineered Products Group. The first step in the fabrication of our boiler assemblies is cutting tubes to length. We will typically ship truckloads of tubing 40 feet to 60 feet in length here to our facility and we will cut them to the net end length of tubing. We will then typically also do a bevel end prep that will assist in the welding process down the line. After we cut the tubes, the next step in the process is to bend the tubes to the appropriate configuration. Most of the bending we do is so-called cold bending, meaning we do not heat the tubes prior to bending. We can achieve up to a 1D bend if the wall thickness is sufficient. Bending thinner wall tubes, we would then go to a hot bending process, which we'll show you in a few minutes. After completing the bending, we check every tube 100% against a full-size template to ensure the bend geometry is correct. Utilizing a specialized hot bending technique that we developed in-house, we are able to bend up to 1D bends with 150 wall tubing and still maintain ovality and wall thickness requirements. Oftentimes the boiler design will require transitioning from one tube diameter to a smaller tube diameter. We accomplish that task with this equipment behind me, which is a swedging machine. We can actually go from a three and a quarter inch tube down to a one and a half inch tube with a multiple stage swedging operation. After the boiler tubes are bent and prepped for welding, they're brought to a fit-up table such as this, where they're all positioned in a hard jig, all the dimensions are checked, and the tubes are positioned for welding. They'll be tacked into place in this fixture and then taken to be completely welded out. After a boiler tube assembly has been fit up and tacked in the fitting table, it is brought here to the manual welding process. Here we will complete the TIG welding of the two butt joints. We will also weld any attachments, spacers, fittings that go onto the assembly as well. After completing the pressure welding of a boiler tube assembly, the pressure welds are x-rayed to ensure integrity of the welds. Then the elements may be prepped for shipment as individual elements, or they may be assembled into a module as the one behind me, and we will ship a completed module. In any case, the completed product is hydro-tested so that we verify there are no leaks in the boiler tube assembly prior to shipment. The module that you saw behind Mark in the previous scene was 16,000 pounds. The company's been known to make units that are five times that size and is limited only in the size of the truck that can carry the unit. For TPJ TV, I'm Eric Lundin.